Fantastic. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. We're out here in the garden uh, today. This is what I got. This is a 3D printed propeller hub, the Octoblade right here. And we're going to test the sound level differences, comparing it with a regular three, uh, like a typical tri-blade, three-bladed seven-inch propeller uh, versus the eight blades. And we're also going to take off some blades uh, on here as much as we can while maintaining a balanced propeller because we need to have the blades basically evenly spaced around the motor uh, to maintain that balance as it's spinning around. Uh, I'm not going to do any super technical testing, t testing the decibels or anything like that. Basically, we'll just be using the standard three blade as a reference and just getting what we can. Just kind of an informal test here, but it's going to be a good time. This propeller hub, the Octoblade propeller hub, you can 3D print yourself. You can go to rcwithadam.com and download the the, the mo model. The, blah, 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 blah. You can download the files to 3D print this yourself. It's basically just two identical halves that clamp on here. And then I'm using these, um, I think these are Dalprop um, uh, folding propeller blades in this hub now uh, you can do that or you can go to pcbway.com because pcbway is the sponsor for this video so big thanks to pcbway for sponsoring uh rc with adam uh, videos and they're really great like honestly um you know they are a sponsor they pay me to tell you about how great they are um but my experience with ordering parts from them mostly the 3d printed stuff has been actually really fantastic um so they do offer rapid prototyping services uh, in addition to their PCBs, the printed circuit boards. That's kind of what, I guess, what they started with. Um, but I've been using their rapid prototyping services and it's actually super duper simple. If you want to do that, you just really go to their website. You can go into the rapid prototyping section, uh, choose your um, uh, type of prototyping that you want to do. You can do CNC machining, injection molding, 3D printing, sheet metal bending and stuff. Um, and then you just basically upload your file, go through the options there, and then they give you a uh, estimate and then they'll like check and make sure that they can actually make this thing and how much it's going to cost. And then they come back with like an actual price for you. And then you just buy it uh, from that point. So that's really cool. I highly recommend you check them out if you're looking for like one off um, rapid prototyping stuff. Also, this is UTR 8100. You can see that it's kind of uh, yellowed. Um, it's just been sitting, uh, you know, this is this has been hanging up on the wall. It's interesting that the top part is yellowed where it's been hitting the, hit by sunlight. The underside is not, it's much more clear. So uh, in this video, we're also going to be testing out, uh, I guess how, how much the UTR 8100 resin can withstand. Um, and it has been compressed on this motor. Uh, the hub has been compressed on the motor with the nut uh, this whole time. So let's get started. We do have quite a bit of like kind of some maybe not powder residue but just you can tell where the nut has rubbed on the resin one outward for that motor and outward for th okay there we go three blade propellers let's give it a try these propellers are seven by 3.5 by three v1s arming okay pretty solid pretty quiet sounds good Let's take it a, a little ways away. Okay, really you can barely hear it at this distance, but it, it's, I mean, it's quite noticeable, but very quiet. Definitely a lot of power for the weight, for sure. And I'm in this small backyard area, so I'm not gonna be doing like big punch out tests and stuff. Okay, let's get a little closer. We do have a little bit of sound, you know, bouncing off from the side of the house here. It kind of gets louder when, the, when we get the house as the backdrop. 
There's also a train in the background right now. All right, let's land back on the bucket. All right, there we go. Okay, battery unplugged. Just in case you're wondering, the propellers are not tight on here. There is some, some room for them to move. The centrifugal force flings it out and keeps them stiff. So that's kind of the, the idea with that. Just like, a, just like with a folding propeller. The noise. Here we go, eight blades. Auto level mode, arming. Oh gosh, that's really scary actually, okay. All right, so as it is, that's actually way louder, interestingly enough. There's definitely some vibration going on, I can tell. Um, and we're hovering, hovering right about half throttle. Definitely way mushier, feels way less powerful. Like the, the throttle changes are very mushy. Like there's a delay kind of. Okay, let's bring it back. And let's land her on the bucket. Quite, quite, it took some time to spin down right there, like if I arm it and then disarm it, it takes a while to spin down because it's, it's got so much momentum. So we're just going to take away two right now. So this is going to be weird, but I'm curious to see if this will work very well. So we're going to take away one from here. Okay, and then take away one from the opposite side, like so. So now we have, it's kind of like a kind of like a bow tie. We have three blades, but they are not symmetrically spaced around it. Uh, it it is maybe I guess it's symmetrical, but it's, they're not evenly spaced around it. So we have basically three on one side, three on the other side. That's going to be interesting. So let's let's try that. It looks weird like this, it looks like one giant fat propeller, but really they should be, when they're actually in motion, they should be flung out like this. All right, six blades, here we go. Arming. Uh, it's flying, it's flying. It's probably louder than the last one. Probably more vibration. Let's take it over to the garden. Definitely louder. You can hear a lot more variations in the motors. It feels like it has a little bit, maybe a little more responsiveness. Hmm, interesting sound. Oh. Huh. All right, let's land her back on the bucket. Okay, that went pretty well. I mean, it certainly flies, so that's something. Four blades, arming, taking off. Mm. Actually, that sounds louder. Kind of go over towards the house a little bit. 
Okay. Let's go out here. Let's go over to the garden. Definitely, I don't know if it seems, it doesn't seem more powerful than the, hmm, how do I put that? It actually seems pretty responsive, maybe the most responsive to my, to my inputs. Interesting. Let's get up a little high here, not really high, but it's kind of at that angle. Okay. Huh. Okay, interesting. Land on the bucket. Boom. Huh. Of course, you know, the thing is, the, the fewer blades that we have uh, on the Octoblade, the more of a waste uh, this entire hub is, you know. Um, so it, that's obviously not ideal. And we have these blades sticking out quite a bit from the motor where normally they would start, like the actual blade uh, edge would start much closer to the center of the motor. So uh, that's just kind of something to note, I guess. <laughs> so we're not gonna do a tri-blade because you can see that it, it's not actually even all the way around. So we have some massive vibrations. Uh, because right here, there's only, you know, one propeller space between these two propellers, and otherwise we have two propeller spaces over here. So basically, this propeller hub, as it's set up right here, is much heavier on the side with the two propellers. Um, and you can kind of visualize that if you, like, look, see, you can kind of see these lines, I think. Those lines, if you imagine a line right down the middle, you have two propellers on this side and one propeller on that side. So we're not going to do that because that's just going to result in a bunch of bad vibration and that could cause uh, a motor to burn up or for this thing to fly really crazy. Two blades on a giant oversized eight blade propeller hub. One arming. Whoa. Oh my gosh. That's really loud. It is so loud. That sounds awful. Like, yeah, I think you can hear it from here. It sounds like a horde of angry bees. It really does. Yeah, sounds terrible. Very responsive though. Probably the most responsive. Uh, probably the most responsive. And that makes sense because it has the least weight for the motors to spin so the motors can change speed very quickly. Especially, you know, compared to having six or eight blades. All right, let's land it on the bucket. Boom. Wowzers, kabowzers. Did you expect that? I did not expect that. That was really loud. I hope you could pick that up. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you could. That's so loud. In my experience, two-bladed propellers um, usually are really loud. Like, they've been way louder than three-bladed propellers. And I'm not totally sure why. No. Oh, I should... I hear a dog running around. And I, I think that that could be because... Got Jasmine back. Uh, so there you go. Now we know. That was very interesting, wasn't it? Did you think that the two-bladed propeller was going to be the loudest? Maybe, if you have experience with two-bladed propellers. But you would think, right, that, that, that two-bladed propellers would be the most efficient um, because they have, you know, the least amount of, like, uh, 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 drag. Or they're, they're like, it's, there's two blades disturbing the air, and there's the greatest amount of distance between the blades so you'd think that there would be less like disrupted air hitting the next blade or something like that uh, but that is not the case 
Um, and I, I think some of it may just have to do with the, the frequency or the, the, like the speed that the propellers are spinning at and the frequency with which the propellers are whacking the air, I guess. Um, and so it's causing like some very bad, uh, I don't even know if it's vibration. It could be vibration as well because these are not very well balanced. So that, that could be a big part of it. Um, but also just very, like a, a very uh, harsh sound. So I, th I think that's very, very interesting. Uh, so the moral of the story, you should probably just stick with your tried and true, you know, standard actually made by a propeller manufacturer, tri-blade propeller, um, especially for your seven inch, cause uh, you know, typically it gets harder to, um, you, you, you deal more with vibrations, things like that when you get larger. So seven inch is kind of large, but I was really pleased actually with how well this thing is handling it. Uh, just for the record here, we have T-Motor 2808, uh, 1300 KV motors on here. Uh, these are like the, the Velux uh, uh, brand. And then we've got, uh, like this, like I said, a six cell lithium ion battery, uh, 1400 milliamp hour that I custom built. And then we have a T-Motor Velux uh, stack and uh, stack, so flight controller and ESC. I can't remember the specs on those. And then this is the um, AOS uh, 7, uh, 7 uh, Fal Falcon, the AOS Falcon 7. Just another lesson that maybe to really figure out stuff, you just gotta go out there and try it. And then you'll know for certain for yourself. Thanks for watching everybody, thanks for hanging out. Have a fantastic day. Get out there, fly something, build something. Um, and in case nobody's told you today, you're doing a good job. Keep doing a good job. And I will see you again very soon. It's super sweet.